me tell you a story from this was a long time ago. My daughter Evelina was just five years old at the time. And we were in my car and she was in the back seat strapped to her car kids seat. I'm sure there's a better English word for that, but you understand what I'm getting at. So she was back there and I was driving and I was driving home to get a document and then we would be on our way. And um, you know, as I drove up to our driveway, see at the time we lived in a house that I actually built myself, I'm very proud of that. Uh, and, and it was on a hill. So the driveway was kind of sloping. So every time I parked, I needed to make sure that the, you know, the gear is in, in parking mode and the, the emergency brake is pulled and everything. So I made sure of that. Then I turned to Evelina back in the back seat and I said, hey girl, I'm just going to run in and get a document. You just sit there and, and uh, I'll be back in a minute, okay? I got a thumbs up from my five-year-old. I ran out of the car, ran up to the door, got the key out. Just as I was about to put the key in the door, I heard the most horrible crashing sound behind me. And I turned around and the car was not in the driveway anymore. It had rolled backwards out in the street, crossed the street, went straight through the fence of my neighbor's garden and was now parked inside my neighbor's garden. But Evelina was standing on the driveway, exactly where I parked the car. So I ran up to her and I knelt and I said, Evelina, what happened? And she said, well, dad, you were gone for so long. <laughs> it's been like eight seconds, okay? That's what I try to tell my wife later on. It was like eight seconds. You were gone for so long. So I was just sitting in the back seat going, I wonder how that emergency brake really works. So she unbuckled herself and crawled to the front seat, put the gear in neutral and let go of the emergency brake. I got a very clever five-year-old there. <laughs> but then I asked her, but, but the car must have gone backwards immediately. How did you get out of the car? Because even if she managed to open the door, the car going backwards, the door would have crushed her. And she was standing at the exact same spot where I parked the car. And she looked at me and said, well, dad, an angel lifted me out. And she shared her story about how she let go of the emergency brake. And immediately it was like time stopped. And she saw this angel coming into the car, grab hold of her, carried her carefully out of the car and put her gently down on the driveway. And when I heard that, first of all, I honestly have to say, I said, okay, angel, if you were busy getting my daughter out of the car, could you have stopped the car? <laughs> I'm so sorry, that's horrible. That's horrible. I didn't think that at all. I didn't think that at all. I was just amazed by the fact that God intervened to save my daughter from this trauma. And I remember that night as Maria and I, my wife and I, was kneeling and just giving thanks to God. God spoke to me. And it was one of those rare occasions where I almost could hear his voice audibly inside of me. And he said, you have no idea. How many attacks of the enemy that was sent out toward you and your family that fell down to the ground even before you knew about them because of your thanksgiving. And I'll never forget that. With that, I'm not saying that if you've suffered uh, tragedies or hard times in your family, I'm not saying that that is because you haven't thanked God enough. That it doesn't work that way. This is a broken world and we don't know why things happen. But I do believe that if you just keep thanking God and keep thanking God, sooner or later, freedom will come. Sooner or later, freedom will come. Sooner or later, that fish is going to spit you out on dry land if you just keep thanking God because gratitude brings freedom. Amen.